I have a good friend. She is a painter. The body betrayed her, but the painter lives on. The brushes, they tremble. Spear in the edges, she mixes the colors. On the day she feels strong. This is a story not about coping with Parkinson's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. It's not about an artist who continues to create beauty despite the disease. It's a story of determination in the face of disease, of braving a journey of pain and not allowing disease to define who you are. Tina is a passionate artist that has created art in many different media. She's also diagnosed with both Parkinson's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Over time, these diseases have robbed her of her mobility, voice, and ability to feed herself. A once cheerful, independent person, Tina's dignity was replaced with unfathomable pain. And with the loss of dexterity, it's challenged her ability to create art. Despite her new reality, Tina's resolve allowed her on occasional good days to create art. But today, even that is waning. These words that follow are Tina's. They share her perspective on the battles in this part of her life. Pray to the gods that be. Look at me and see my pain. Emotional, physical. Pain so far and away greater than ever imagined possible. Tina has fought the progress of her diseases with attitude, technology, and support, but she's still losing the battles. The toll is in her ability to manage daily life. Days have distractions. Family, friends, and caregivers are her support network. Playing bridge, where Tina is a bronze life master, and these days, brainstorming art when she can't actualize it. And her nights, only Tina can describe the pain. I hate and dread the night. Trapped in this foreign body. A once tall, lean, and lithe body that could run, dance, hold, rock my children, kiss. In the quiet of the night, I discovered endless creativity. And in the dark night she dreams and her star shines bright and in the morning light nothing is wrong now I'm helpless I can no longer even turn in bed more phantom smells more noises I'm lost and lonely in my solitary world. Only the afflicted understand my life of hell, my nocturnal despondency, my curse, life, my gift, life. A beautiful little granddaughter that I held selfishly for the first time. Don't hog her all to yourself. They admonished, you have years to hold her. I may never be able to hold her again. She's proud in the saddle, no matter how much she's hurting. She drinks her black coffee, puts her boots on and rides. And in the darkest night, she dreams and her stars shine bright. And in the morning light, nothing. Once an artist of detail, now left with two semi-functional fingers, I've become a broken burden on my husband, angry, terrified, trapped in this scary world all alone. Patience no longer. Walk, feet, walk, damn you feet, damn you hands. Please, please look at me. I am you. Stuck in a chair with colors pouring in my mind like rain. 
empty canvases yearning for expression, lost in a land no longer accessible. Once quick and quirky, once sexy and playful, once joyful and funny. I am but a broken doll, a broken person. In her dreams, Tina is pain-free. Joyful as I run without fears, where I laugh, where I sing, where I'm heard. I jump from cloud to cloud. A premonition? Then, night returns. The most beautiful of reds cascading down across a background of grays and black. The vividness of violet and green laughing. And suddenly pain, harsh and angry, colorless, interrupts the joy. As the diseases progress, Tina tries to remain steadfast. As life wears on, I've abandoned the task of trying to look good every day. I no longer wear makeup, nor have I bought any new clothes in the last couple of years. I'm now turning totally inward, rarely leaving my chair. Pain is getting worse and worse, and now relying more on powerful medication. One small peek at my minute and all's well with the world again. I'm getting too tired though. When I'm finished fighting, I'm going to end my life. I've discussed this with my whole family and as they all witness the ugliness of this disease, they're not happy about it, but they truly understand. This is Tina's prayer, sharing her thoughts. The pain of hearing bitter, biting words to those I love. Words said out of physical pain. Words said in a state of confusion, of inner conflict, of pain. Pray that tomorrow I'll be still by the morning's light, peaceful and quiet as the earth revolves and the morning sun slowly shines on the lifeless body that is me. Still and lifeless though my body might be, my soul will soar with grandeur and peace. Living eternally through lives I'm humbled to have touched and the endless who've touched mine. My body whole again. In death I rejoice. The end of pain. Mobile again. Dignified again. Joyful again. Be gentle with me. Be gentle with my broken life. My life interrupted. Constant pain. Walk, feet, walk. I miss living. I loved life. Laughing. My precious kids. I pray that I've helped someone else in understanding the silent agony. Tina was an artist, and still is an artist, even if she's no longer creating with her hands. These days, Tina describes her vision to an apprentice who acts as Tina's hands to bring her art to life. She has shared the intensity of her pain that we cannot grasp. She has shared her heartbreak. And yet, her attitude remains gracious and bright. Above all is her remarkable strength, an inspiration for all who are fortunate to know Tina. How would we know how fast the years would go when we were younger? The dreams make us stronger. I look in the mirror Think of my dear friends, of the promises broken and the lies we were told. We keep on believing, lifting each other, because in this good life, dreams never get old. And in our dreams,
darkest night we dream and our stars shine bright and in the morning light nothing is wrong